We are going to combine sections 18.9, 18.10, and 18.11 together. They're all pretty small. And these three sections are all on new methods for synthesizing aldehydes and ketones, ones that new in terms of ones that we have not yet seen. Sections 18.9 and 18.10 are on synthesizing ketones. Section 18.9 talks about synthesizing ketones from carboxylic acids. And section 18.10 is covering the synthesis of ketones from nitriles, which are compounds that have the cyano group on them. And then section 1811 is the synthesis of aldehydes and ketones. And these are going to be from acid chlorides. So we actually have quite a few ways to make aldehydes and ketones. The syntheses, though, you know, aren't as interesting as some of the other reactions that we've looked at. So starting with the synthesis of ketones from carboxylic acids, this is an organolithium reaction. I'm going to use for this reaction two equivalents of the organolithium, which I'm going to, I'm going to use R prime for the organolithium reagent to distinguish it from the alkyl group that's already present on the carboxylic acid, although they certainly can be the same. They don't need to be different. The, we are only going to add one equivalent of uh, alkyl group onto the carboxylic acid, but the reason that we need to use two equivalents of organolithium reagent for every uh, one equivalent of carboxylic acid is because this is, as you remember from first quarter, this is a very strong base, and of course this is an acid, and when you bring them um, in contact with each other, the first thing that's going to happen, whether we want it to or not, is deprotonation of the carboxylic acid with the strong base. So the first equivalent of organolithium reagent that we put into the pot is just simply going to deprotonate the carboxylic acid. And it's the second re, uh, equivalent of the organolithium that actually reacts with the, with the carboxylic acid. At this time, it would be a carboxylate anion. If your organolithium reagent is really expensive or really hard to make, you may want to uh, use some kind of cheap base, like sodium hydroxide, to deprotonate the carboxylic acid, and if you were to do that, then you would only need one equivalent of the organolithium. But if you're trying to minimize the number of steps in the reaction, um, because as you guys know from lab, every time you do a step, every step that you add messes with your yield and also messes with the, the efficiency of the reaction. Once, once the carboxylic acid has been deprotonated, one equivalent of the organolithium reagent will add the mechanism you're already familiar with that um, R minus is going to come in and attack the carbonyl group, open up the carbon oxygen double bond. This hydrogen's been removed long ago in an acid base reaction, and we end up with something that looks like this. Put our water in in step two, and we end up with. A couple of OH groups that will rearrange themselves to form a ketone just simply because the thermodynamics of the ketone is more stable than this um, than this alcohol. So that's section 18.9, just that one simple single reaction. In section 18.10, we're looking at synthesizing ketones from nitriles. And again, here's the generic structure of a nitrile. This is a Grignard reaction. Two steps. Uh, first we add the Grignard, and the second step we're going to add some dilute acid, or you could use water instead if you wanted to. And bottom line, you just make a ketone. If you want to look at this reaction step by step, your book gives it to you step by step. It doesn't give you the mechanism for the reaction, um, but you can, you can get the stepwise details of it if you want. 
I don't think it's that important that you know every individual step along the way. And that's synthesis of a ketone from a nitrile. The last set of reactions we're going to look at are aldehydes and ketones from acid chlorides. So we're going to, I'm going to do some stuff over here, so kind of indent a little bit, start your notes. I'm not quite in the middle of the page for this one. Here's the acid chloride. Remember, we just started uh, talking about what they were on, on Wednesday. And this, we can react with a reducing agent, a mild reducing agent, very similar to lithium aluminum hydride, uh, but it is lithium aluminum tritert butoxy hydride. It's going to have a lot of threes in the formula. But it's tritert butoxy. Here's the tert butoxy group. There's three of them. And then uh, lithium and aluminum and one hydrogen. And that's just a, like I said, a mild reducing agent that ultimately, when it's all said and done, is replacing the chlorine with hydrogen. The acid chloride, and sometimes our compounds just start off as acid chlorides, but it's interesting to know, useful to know, that you can very easily synthesize an acid chloride from a carboxylic acid using SOCl2. So we'll put that in there, uh, that step as well. And so that will get us the aldehyde, the one new synthesis for an aldehyde. We can do a similar reaction turning an acid chloride into a ketone if we use a dialkyl cuprate reagent. Again, I'm going to, oh, that's supposed to be a U, not a 2. I'm going to be using an R prime to distinguish it from this alkyl group that's already present. And this is copper, C-U-L-I. And this will just synthesize the ketone from the acid chloride. The lithium uh, dialkyl cuprate reagent is reactive towards acid chlorides. It, it's very similar to a Grignard or an organolithium. It's reactive towards acid chlorides, but it's not strong enough to react with a ketone. So you're able to do this synthesis and stop it at a ketone. If you try to use a Grignard here, or if you tried to use an organolithium reagent here, you would get further reaction with the um, with the ketone to make an alcohol. So this reagent, this milder reagent, allows us to stop the synthesis at the ketone. And I don't think you need to write study questions for these reactions, but you do need to know them. So make sure that you include them in your flashcards or. However you, um, however you go about getting this stuff in your head.